Um, so um, today I'm going to talk about a couple of research projects um, that we've run over the past couple of years, um, focusing on uh, digital items and um, how to collect and curate and make them discoverable. Um, but before I start uh, talking about the actual projects, I just want to give a little bit of background to folks. Um, so the first um, first uh, concept I'll be talking about is uh, Triple IF. Um, so it is a um, acronym standing for the International Image Interoperability Framework, and it is a consortium designed to create uh, both a community of practice, um, but also um, a set of APIs for describing and sharing uh, digital materials on the web. Um, the second uh, thing I'll be talking about today a little bit is Content DM, uh, which is OCLC's uh, digital repository service. Uh, and then finally, um, I'll be talking about Wikibase, uh, which I'm sure folks are uh, familiar with, um, but it is the, um, the infrastructure or a, a infrastructure uh, for working with structured data. Um, and it's actually the platform uh, that uh, powers uh, Wikidata. So if you ever used Wikidata, um, you've used Wikibase, and uh, I know that that's a, a very popular data source, um, so I'm sure everyone is uh, familiar with it. So um, this, this presentation, uh, as I mentioned, is sort of about two projects. Um, and in a sense, um, these projects are sort of a tale of two cities um, in that uh, they both focus on um, or circle around um, the use, creation, and management of digital materials as well as their metadata. Um, but they sort of take different approaches um, to how to um, accomplish those goals or tackle those problems. Um, and the first project uh, focuses on mass aggregation um, and sort of algorithmic-driven uh, um, curation and aggregation of metadata. So uh, for this first project, uh, we, uh, we developed a, um, a prototype of the currently under development uh, IIIF change discovery API. Um, and we, we then integrated into it um, about 13 million um, digital items across um, all of our content DM collections or users and their collections. Um, we then harvested their metadata and then um, we then attempted to reconcile the string metadata headings to uh, linked data URIs. Um, but there, there's sort of a caveat there. So I mean, there was 13 million items. Um, so there are hundreds of millions of unique uh, string terms we were working with. Um, so just to sort of narrow down uh, the scope of the project, uh, we only looked at subject headings or, or terms that were associated with Dublin core fields. So subject, um, uh, type, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and additionally, we only, uh, we limited the strings we tried to reconcile to those that were used more than 2,000 times. So um, after doing that, um, we, we built just a, a prototype application for sort of searching across these 13 million items. Uh, the, the link is there, and it, it should be a live service. Um, but just to give an example, um, I am a, um, in, in a past life, um, I was a, a jazz uh, musician, uh, so, and I have a huge affinity for jazz. So here is just doing a search for uh, Louis Armstrong. Um, and just like in sort of any sort of uh, user experience, um, you see um, the, the results um, in the main section there. Uh, and then off to the side, you sort of have a facet, um, a facet of different um, subjects or contributors or places or, or creators. And then if we were to actually click on one of those, um, this is where uh, IIIF um, becomes really important. Uh, so the image here is being driven uh, by a IIIF um, image viewer. In this case, it's uh, Mirador, which is developed out of Stanford. I um, mean, what's really nice about this is across all of these 13 million images um, or items um, in their digital images, regardless of whether they are TIFF or JPEGs or JPEGs 2000s, um, the, this image viewer provides you a, a uniform um, experience of interacting with it. So providing deep zoom, um, panning, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is, provides a very nice uniform way to interact with this digital resource. Um, and then on the side panel there, you see um, you some of the metadata associated with this thing. So um, all those, those blue things are hyperlinks. Um, so those are terms that we were able to reconcile um, successfully. 
Um, so you see a couple of um, or some subjects there. Um, they're kind of high level subjects, maybe not the most useful um, if you're trying to do a lot of sort of um, detailed research or exploration of the, da of the data. Um, and then you see other things like what is it? It's an image, which is helpful, but they're all images. Um, so how helpful is that really um, is a question we wanted to evaluate. Um, and then also, obviously, the, the provenance, uh, what collection this belongs to and what organization uh, manages this collection. So um, the findings from that result or from that project were that um, it's really interesting and exciting to find unexpected things in unexpected places, um, which is which is sort of one of the inherent things of working with a very, very large aggregate of data. Um, but in terms of trying to work with the data, um, specifically the metadata, um, reconciliation was, was very limited. Um, and there are a couple of factors there. Um, the scale of the metadata uh, made it sort of inherently difficult to work with, um, almost required um, sort of an algorithmic approach to doing it. Um, also, uh, the, the metadata was very um, heterogeneous. Um, and when I say that, I mean not only the terms. Um, so, and when I say terms, I mean not only the, the, the string, but the, the language of the string. Um, if it was uh, derived from a controlled vocabulary, the controlled vocabularies varied wildly um, across the set of data. Um, and almost most problematically was um, the, the model itself um, was very heterogeneous. So while there was sort of a backbone, if you will, of Dublin Core, um, Content DM collection managers are free to create their own metadata fields. Um, and then if they want, they can map them to Dublin Core. But this makes it very, very difficult to try to you know, sort of create a coherent uh, sort of semantic data model when you're working with all this data. Um, and then finally, the algorithmic approach to matching was was problematic just in, in, in that algorithmic reconciliation is always problematic when you don't have some sort of um, domain expertise working on the project. Um, and, and ultimately, um, this was really sort of an exercise in harvesting and mapping um, uh, record-based metadata for discovery. So the next project, the more recent project, um, sort of wanted to start start over. I mean, what happens if we could do this from the ground up, um, not have to immediately create and manage and aggregate the whole set of 13 million records um, or items, but rather sort of you know, what, what blue sky opportunities would there be if, if we started over from the ground up? So for this project, uh, we worked um, with five Content TM users, um, specifically uh, folks from Temple, U University of Miami, um, the Huntington uh, Library um, and Botanical Gardens, um, Minnesota Reflections, um, which is an, um, a consortia, or is, a, is an aggregation uh, in Minnesota, uh, and then finally Cleveland Public Library. Um, and the reason I mentioned all of them was um, they were very, very vital to, to successfully completing this project. Um, and it also um, represents the, um, the wide variety of organizations we wanted to work with. So universities, public libraries, special collections, um, sort of mini aggregators, if you will. Uh, we wanted to work with data from all of those respective um, types of libraries. So um, from those five partners, uh, we initially selected three collections to work with, uh, varying in size and varying in, in sort of um, scope of terms of what they had in them. Um, and then we um, manually reviewed, mapped, and reconciled um, all of the metadata. So we used uh, OpenRefine uh, to do all of this um, sort of metadata mapping and reconciliation work. Um, and then we actually set up and deployed our own instance of Wikibase. Um, and we developed a uh, developed in conjunction with all of our partners a uh, data model um, that we then sort of created or, or instantiated in the Wikibase. Uh, and then we used um, the Wikibase um, APIs to import all the data into Wikibase um, to be able to um, edit manage, sort of curate in general, all of the, the entities. And then um, 
to sort of compare and contrast with the first project, we then built a new sort of data explorer that um, integrated a, or sat on top of um, Wikibase and its APIs and all of the services that it provides out of the box. So uh, here's a screenshot from that application. Uh, again, doing a search for Louis Armstrong. Um, here, obviously, the results are much smaller uh, because of the, the source data we were working with was, was considerably smaller than the first project. Um, again, to compare and contrast, um, here is that same image. Um, again, IIIF um, is, you know, drives all of the display of the digital resource itself. Um, but now what you can see um, in terms of the metadata pan panel is, is a little bit more information. Um, so uh, specifically comparing contrasting against the initial project, um, you can see that there's more information about what type of thing this is. So as opposed to being just an image, um, you can see that it is specifically a photograph. Um, and even more specifically, it has the processor format of black and white prints. Um, so this level of detail allows you to sort of zoom down in terms of the classification of what you're working with um, to help uh, discovery purposes. Um, and then you can also see um, a larger variety of um, subject headings, um, more granular, if you will, in terms of um, uh, precision uh, for recall purposes. Um, and then most importantly, I think I would argue, is you can see that there's a um, a claim saying that this photograph depicts Louis Armstrong. Um, and this is where um, manually working with the metadata really provides um, more value to, to the end user in terms of what you can say about the information. Um, so if you clicked on that depiction item, um, that, sorry, that hot link for Louis Armstrong, what you then do is you can actually do now do um, focus searches for I only want to find materials that um, has claimed that they're a depiction of Louis Armstrong. So again, the results, it narrows it from 10 to eight, um, not that dramatic, but again, we're working with a much smaller subset. Um, so we would expect that if you're working with a large set of data, um, these might be more, more, more dramatic of a example of focusing down on what you're looking for specifically. Um, we, another benefit of working with Wikibase and working with data structured data is you begin to you can begin to pull out contextual entities and set them aside as their own sort of first first order, if you will, or primary entity, as opposed to having it embedded embedded in the string metadata. So, for example, this 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 picture has a very long description that's managed in the record of Louis Armstrong. But now using this Wikibase or structured data environment, specifically here Wikibase, we can actually create uh, an entity for the person, Louis Armstrong. Um, we sort of have a, in our own Wikibase deployment, we had sort of a minimum set of properties that we thought would be vital for um, um, using data about Louis Armstrong in our system. But um, as, as Huda mentioned in her presentation, we can go off to other data sources and pull in um, sort of contextual information, background information, um, images. So this is being derived from Wikipedia, Wikipedia, and uh, Wikimedia Commons. Um, and you can also add a more value to the to the met, to the metadata. So we developed a prototype application um, that would load the image and then load all of its respective um, about um, so, so subject headings. And what the user can do is go through and say, um, this, this image is, is sort of a, in essence about all these things, but more specifically, it actually depicts certain things. So it depicts entertainers, um, it depicts musicians. So it's sort of making a more granular relationship between contextual entities and the resource itself. Um, and you can also then add context to those claims. So this um, is a cropping tool. So you can actually crop out the representation of Louis Armstrong and say in the data, not only does this image depict Louis Armstrong, but here is uh, here is that depiction of him in the photograph. Um, and then finally, um, you can add brand new knowledge. So you can actually add a claim saying, there's also this thing depicted in this image um, and it happens to be a trumpet. So again, you can crop that image out. Um, and then what this does in the Wikibase um, system is actually then adds that sort of contextual image to the claim that this image depicts Louis Armstrong and a trumpet. 
Uh, so the findings from this work is that um, it, it takes a lot of human effort to, to create and manage the structured data. Um, Wikibase is an extremely powerful and flexible infrastructure for creating, managing, and curating structured data. Um, and finally, that there's a lot of potential for enhancing existing metadata um, about cultural heritage items if you can provide the domain experts, um, the collection curators, the infrastructure and the, the, the applications to add that additional information to the existing records. Um, and then finally, some further research opportunities. Um, we'd like to go back and try to better evaluate this algorithmic approach, because obviously there's a lot of cultural heritage metadata in the world, and we can't expect everyone to, to basically recatalog it. Um, we'd like to better determine how to sort of pull apart the contextual metadata from the descriptive metadata of the item. Um, and we'd also like to uh, better explore how to leverage that contextual metadata in end user applications, um, uh, akin to what was talked about in the previous presentation. So with that, um, again, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for the time, uh, I guess, and then open it up to questions. Oh, thank you, Jeff, for oh, bank on time. There are a couple of questions here. So one from Ben Kompingen from Leiden University. Did you choose Dublin Core as the most generic model? Uh, was it really surprising then to find the heterogeneity? Yeah, so um, for the initial project, we used Dublin Core just because that's sort of the, the backbone data model that ContentDM uses. Um, so it was the one known that we could map to. Um, so it was it was not surprising at all to find that the, the metadata was very heterogeneous. Um, and then for the, the latter project, the one on Wikibase, we actually developed our own data model. So we were not um, sort of um, limited to what you can say in Dublin Core. Uh, thank you. And there is, are the Wikibase and Data Explorer from second project publicly available? It is. We're working with our partners still um, to work out a few bugs and UI issues, um, but uh, it, it is available on the web, and I can share that link um, uh, sh shortly. Okay, thank you. Are the APIs for developing your data explorer from Wikibase native package a Docker or one without Docker implementation? So this is not the Docker deploy Wikibase. Uh, we actually deployed the components separately um, just because we wanted to um, um, be able to deploy them in um, different, um, we were using Amazon, so in different EC2 instances. Um, so we didn't have the query service running on the same machine um, as the, the MySQL database. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we deployed it sort of, um, um, piece by piece, not using the Docker deploy. But I have used the Docker deploy before, um, and it works very, very well. And uh, do you store the provenance of added annotations? Um, we do, in, in I guess if it's in terms of who made the, the sort of annotation, um, we do not uh, do that right now. Uh, but you certainly could. I, Wikibase has a really good built-in mechanics um, for adding um, reference claims or sort of references to what, you know, where claims came from or provenance about those statements. Um, so we certainly could. Uh, what we do add references for is when we, if, if we pulled in data from um, VOF or LC or Getty or Wikidata or, or GeoNames for geographic stuff, we pulled over uh, the URI for that item when we created a specific claim about it. Um, but we did not do that when people, uh, the, the partners were creating those annotations. Okay, and just one last question. Did you load your Wikibase manually or did you use a bot or a script of uh, OpenRefine? So we uh, we used the PyWikiBot script to load it. Um, we could have tried to use the you know, direct load from uh, from OpenRefine, um, but it, at the time we were doing the loading process, um, it had not been um, it was not as easily configurable as it is now. 
Um, and we didn't want to go sort of pulling apart the, the quick statements code to be able to point at our wiki base and sort of do all of the um, configuration that, um, that that service now does provide. Um, so what we did ended up doing was just writing um, a little script that used the PyWikiBot library to push the data into our wiki base.